Hi folks, I just wanted to share a few thoughts on titling your work. You worked really hard on something, you you know, a composition of any kind, and now you want to share it with people. And unfortunately, it's pretty high pressure when it comes to putting a title on it. It's like naming a baby. Uh, you know, you want to figure out, all right, so first of all, keep in mind that somebody's going to start judging what it is that you've produced right from the first word of the title. Uh, it's the most probably the most common way that someone is uh, introduced to a, a composition is through you know reading the title first before they move on to actually reading the body of of whatever you know the text is that you've produced so because of that you want to put some thought into it it can be kind of intimidating uh, but there's no reason to freak out about it so I want to be clear that the purpose of this discussion is not to share some thoughts about how to title anything um, I'm not sure that all of this is necessarily going to apply to you know, titling a short story or a film or something like that. But certainly if you're titling anything that has um, as its central purpose, if it's an argument or if it's even a report of some kind or a study or something that you're, you know, an article that you're writing, um, then I would definitely remember that there are two things that you usually want your titles to be. And you want them to be descriptive and you want them to be interesting. So let's focus on descriptive first. The word vague refers to something having an imprecise meaning. And um, just to give you a few examples that are relatively typical of, of the kinds of titles that students will sometimes put on their essays in college, um, take a moment, pause this video, and look at these five different titles here and think about whether or not you would consider these titles to be appropriate for argumentative essays or if you feel like maybe they're not descriptive enough. So just going through these, number one, reflective essay, that's the title of the prompt, not the title of your essay, right? That's the kind of thing that we should all be avoiding as soon as, I mean, you know, by, the, by the time you get to college level writing, you should know not to title your work or not to use the name of, you know, the, the, the assignment as the title of your work. You know, you're, you are writing something unique, and so you want to provide something that's specific. Something must be done, right? That's that's great, but is it just a general, like, something? It could be anything? I don't know. Uh, bad influence. What's the bad influence, you know? These titles here, they're, some of them are, are very boring. Some of them are trying at metaphor or trying at something fun or creative. But none of them say anything about what the essay is actually trying to communicate. At the very least, you want your reader to know from your title what your essay is about. I would recommend including your position if you have an argument. It's always helpful to um, share that immediately. Certainly having a clear thesis statement is, is a requirement in virtually every you know, essay prompt out there. And um, why not put it in your title too? Now you're not going to put a whole thesis statement in your title, but you can at least say specifically what the position is that you are trying to address. If not, then at least providing your reader with the issue that you're going to address um, would be helpful. And we can get more specific too. Depends on what you're writing about. If you're writing about, um, well, like this first title here, if you're if you're talking about, how, you know, people beating the teeth out of each other in, in hockey, professional hockey, um, you don't want to title your essay in a way that isn't specific. If your whole essay is about the NHL, say the name of the organization in the title, right? Be as specific as you can be without it being awkward stylistically in the title. Also, if you are focusing an essay or an analysis of some kind on a specific uh, primary source, such as in this case, uh, the Biographia Literaria by Samuel Taylor, Taylor Coleridge, um, you would want to include that in the title as well, if it is the primary source that your essay is, is focusing completely on. Oh, but there's always the boring boringness. Now, what I'm about to talk about here, is, we got to be really careful with this, because on the one hand, you want your titles to be interesting because you want your reader to think, hey, this is going to be you know, worth my time reading it. But at the same time, 
you don't want to sacrifice clarity or you don't want to sacrifice the descriptiveness of the title for something interesting. And you certainly don't want to ruin the tone of whatever the composition that you, you've created. You don't want to ruin the tone by titling something, you know, in a silly way or whatever. So what I'm kind of getting talk about here for a minute is just this idea that you you want your title not to be boring but you also don't want your title to be misleading so let's kind of look at a few examples think about what you're trying to do having an interesting title does not necessarily mean for example including a pun in the title now we all know puns. People love puns. Actually, a lot of people don't. In fact, most people hate puns. You know, they groan. It's the kind of thing where, you know, if you're, I don't know, if you're driving past a cemetery and someone in the car says, "Oh man, they're just dying to get in there," right? Oh, but it's like a, it's they're 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 jokes that some people find humorous, um, and other people are terribly bothered by. Um, and so I would strongly recommend avoiding puns in your title unless the pun is serving some sort of purpose to support whatever it is that you're trying to say. Um, you know, and, and the example here, show me the Monet, Japanese prince as influence in the water lily pond. Um, I would argue that that's a bad use of a pun because show me the Monet is playing off of that phrase show me the money which is from the Cameron Crowe film Jerry Maguire uh, which is about football and it has nothing to do with with Japanese prints influencing impressionist painting so it's a completely irrelevant pun and it therefore it shouldn't be there that's my argument no, it might be entertaining. Somebody might smile at it, but I'm not sure that you necessarily want to uh, distract your reader immediately with something that's irrelevant like that. So a common structure for academic titling involves the use of a colon, uh, these two little dots right here. And what you can do with a colon is you can attach two different components of a sentence. Right? And it's, it's pretty common for people to create academic titles that have on one side of the colon something that is intended to be interesting or thought-provoking or attention-grabbing or even humorous or whatever uh, and then on the other side of the colon have something that's more descriptive so that way you can kinda have interesting and descriptive at the same time so in some of these examples here you know you have you can start off with something interesting or something that's supposed to be thought-provoking or whatever maybe a quote from the source that you are going to be analyzing um, if you absolutely have to pun maybe you can do that but you don't have to and, and remember just because you can pun doesn't mean you should um, but then you follow it up with something that is more descriptive 